Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Midwood High School. This is a video on the Bohr model of the atom. Um, we did the gold foiling experiment in terms of discussion and in our textbooks, right? And we realized that um, Rutherford, who did the gold foil experiment with some other scientists, came up with the fact that the nucleus is a very small, very dense area, okay, in the atom, and it has a positive charge, okay? We know in the nucleus that we have protons and neutrons, okay? So Rutherford didn't discover neutrons, but we know that from after the fact. We also have the fact that we have negative electrons that are traveling around or orbiting the nucleus. This is Rutherford's model. The question came up, um, how come the electrons being negative and traveling in, around in a path around the um, positive nucleus, how come there's no attraction on the eventual crushing in of the electrons into the nucleus. Then along comes Bohr. He proposed a new term called energy levels, right? And simply what these are, these are specific regions of energy in which electrons reside or live, okay? Now, he said that these energy levels, right, for an electron to travel from one energy level to another, energy must be lost or gained and specifically if you're going from a higher energy level to a lower energy level energy must be released okay and if you want to go from a lower energy level to a higher energy level okay you must absorb some amount of energy okay and then hence the term quanta okay specific amount of energy that's lost or gained when um electrons move from energy levels one to another. We know that we have electrons orbiting the um, nucleus, okay? Use a different color, all right? Now these orbits coincide with uh, energy levels. So we're gonna focus on energy levels when we discuss Bohr, okay? So we have electrons traveling around in orbits, but specifically they're located in energy levels, all right? Moving on. We also talked about electron configurations in terms of the Bohr model. Now think of the electron configurations, right, as an address book where you can find where the electrons live. Now the thing is, we cannot put the electrons randomly in the atom. We must follow some type of building code, right? So what helps us with that is the 2 and squared rule, okay? And what do we simply mean? You will insert or plug in um, the energy level number. For example, energy level n equals one means energy level number one. That's right here, right? Energy level number one. Okay. And energy level number two, n equals two. That's right here. Okay, whoops. All right. Okay, and so on. So we have the energy levels right here, one, two, and three. Okay, fine. Now when you plug the numbers in, folks, you're gonna get for energy level number one, two n squared, being simply two, all right? For energy level number two, two n squared would be eight. For energy level three, two n squared would be 18. And for energy level number four, two n squared would be 32. Now simply what these numbers mean, they're telling you the maximum, okay? They're telling you the maximum capacity for electrons in that specific energy level. So once again, energy level number one cannot hold more than two electrons. It can hold one, it can hold two, but it can't hold three or more. Likewise, energy level number two cannot hold more than eight electrons. It can go from zero to seven, even eight, but it cannot hold nine, 10, or 11. Okay, so that's, anytime you go over its capacity, that's a major, major violation. So let's say we have something like magnesium, right? We know magnesium, if you look on your reference tables, has 12 protons, atomic number 12. Okay, and if it's neutral, we know also it has 12 electrons. Now, where can I put these electrons in terms of a configuration? Can I put four of them in energy level number one? No, I can't do that. Okay, can I put, say, 10 of them in energy level number two? I can't do that. So what we do, we just fill in order, and here's how we do it. We say that since energy level number one can hold a max of two electrons, we put two electrons there, okay? So we have 10 electrons left. 
the dash. So in energy level number one, we have two electrons. Um, in the second energy level, right, energy level number two, okay, we have a max of eight electrons, right? So we can put eight there. So we've just taken care of 10 electrons. We have two electrons left. So they will go into the third energy level and you're done okay so 2a2 means that in energy level number one you have two electrons in energy level number eight you energy open this energy level number two you have eight electrons and energy level number three you have two more electrons so two plus eight plus two that's 12 you've accounted for the 12 electrons for magnesium okay so that's simply how you use it you don't put more electrons than you already have, folks. If you have 12 electrons, that's what you use. Because some people were asking me, um, how come we don't go up to what number, like another higher number? No, if you have 12 electrons and you've reached 12, you stop. That's it, and you're done. Okay, guys, I hope this brief video was a help. As always, hard work for sacrifice equals success, and take care.